Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the Book of Romans, the Masterpiece by the Apostle Paul. And we're using the commentary, the Neo-Orthodox Commentary by Karl Barth. We're using the 7th edition, which is dated 1965. It was originally written in 1933. We're going to look at 6, 1 through 9, and we're going to look at it in three moments of Crucifixion, Block 1, Resurrection, Block 2, and Eschatological Hope, Block 3. Let's go to Block 1 and take a look at verses 1, 2, and 3. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? Never may it be so. For we have died to sin, how could we still live in it? For as many has been baptized into Jesus Christ... They have been baptized into his death. Now, Karl Barth, the old man is dissolved in the new man. Barth loves using that verb, dissolve. The old man is dissolved in the new man by the incomprehensible decision of God. Again, it's the faithfulness of God. It's the decision of God. It is all on the side of God and his son, Jesus Christ, that our salvation takes place by the incomprehensible decision of God. Then we cross the threshold unto the eternal moment of knowledge of God, true knowledge of God in his Son. Divine no is transformed into the divine yes, and through the act of baptism, through the sacrament of baptism, we enter into the sacrament of truth, the sacrament of holiness, it becomes a sign of eternal life. The sacrament of baptism becomes a sign of eternal life. It declares in a visual image, it declares the word of God. The death of Christ dissolves the fall of mankind into a void. The death of Christ dissolves the fall of mankind into a void, into nothingness, into nothingness, into no power. Very powerful commentary by Karl Barth. And, uh, you know, I've been through this commentary. This is my third time through it. And I really appreciate Karl Barth's very determined conviction to remain conservative in his theology and to center his theology on the Word of God in Christ. And he always emphasizes the uh, Word of God and the Divine Act of Grace. I appreciate that about Karl Barth. It's a tremendous commentary, and it uh, went through many editions, but it did change the Christian world of theology. We've looked at crucifixion. Let's move on to block two. Let's take a look at resurrection. Barth labels it Futurum Resurrection, the future of resurrection ahead. Verses 4 through 6. Let's take a look at Paul. We are buried with him through baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, so also we should walk a new life. Paul puts an ethical imperative on it. So also we should walk a new life. If we have become in his likeness, in his death, so also shall we become in the resurrection. Knowing this, that the old self was crucified with him, that the old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body of sin might be annulled to nothingness. Karl Barth, we are visibly united with Christ in time. This way, we, are so, see, we see ourselves in God. By being in Christ, we, are see, we see ourselves in God. Now, comprehend and meditate on the powerful reality being testified to there. By being in Christ, we see ourselves in God. Because Christ is co-eternal and co-substantial with the Father. By seeing ourselves in Christ, we see ourselves in God. His increased becomes more 
apparent in our decrease. The sign of baptism reveals our invisible fellowship with Christ, where we perceive divine mercy, where we perceive divine grace, where we perceive the futurum resurrection ahead. In the midst of all pervading judgment, all pervading crisis, the body of sin is overcome. In the midst of all pervading crisis judgment, crisis is Greek for judgment, the judgment of Jesus Christ in his cross and in his resurrection and in his ascension. In the all-pervading crisis judgment of Jesus Christ, the body of sin is overcome and dissolves away as any body of influence. And that's what we know as believers. As believers, we already have internalized the resurrection, the bodily historical resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when we look at the crucifixion, we see the resurrected, crucified Christ. When we look at the resurrection, we see the resurrected, crucified Christ. We see them together in close dialectical relationship. The one who was abandoned is the one who is resurrected. The same Christ who was abandoned on the cross is the Christ who was and is and remains resurrected and exalted to the right hand of the Father. Now, what does this give us? It gives us hope, says Jürgen Moltmann. It gives us hope, says Karl Barth. Let's go to block three. Futurum resurrection is within our real horizon, verses 7, 8, and 9. For the one who has died spiritually has been freed from sin. If we died with Christ, we also believe, pistuo, we also have faith, as we should say, we also have faith that we shall also live with him. That verb used was pistuo, the action verb of faith. We also continue faithing that we shall also live with him. We continue faithing, we continue with the action of faith that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead, egairo is used there, it's used for resurrection, having been egairo raised from the dead, death no longer rules over him. Karl Barth, futurum resurrection has come within our horizon. Announced in the crucifixion of the old self, the power of sin has been overcome through the grace of, not our possibility, through the grace of divine possibility. The visible is related to the invisible. The finite world is related to the infinite world. The finite self is related to the eternal self. Dying with Christ results in a vast negation of the negative. I love that from Karl Barth. Dying with Christ results in a vast negation of the negative. Faith becomes the decisive factor. Whose faith? Well, I'll tell you right now, we've already learned from previous lessons here, the faith of Christ becomes the decisive factor for our salvation. The faith of Christ becomes the decisive factor for our eschatological hope. The faith of Christ becomes a decisive factor for the death of the old self and the birth of the new self. And we possess an inherent confidence through that faith. The faith of Christ gives us an inherent confidence because he creates faith within us. How did our faith arise? Our faith rose up because the faith of Christ gathered us into his kingdom where he became our good shepherd where we through him gained access through the narrow gate to the father because Christ is co-eternal and co-substantial with the father and you need to have that conviction and memorize it that way because 
there are those that deny that out there. But we need to affirm as a conservative theological conviction that Jesus Christ is co-eternal and co-substantial with the Father. That is foundational to the doctrine of the Trinity, which we believe in. Jesus Christ is co-eternal and co-substantial with the Father, and because he is co-eternal and co-substantial with the Father, we have the power of the cross that dissolves the fall into a void. We have the Futurum resurrection as a real possibility, a divine possibility ahead of us and giving us the ability to walk in new life. Paul gives an imperative. So also we should walk in new life. Very powerful. And just to wrap up, I'm going to read the commentary in 2 and 3 by Bart. Not 1, I'm just going to go to 2 and 3. Karl Barth, note 4 in block 2. We are visibly united with Christ in time. That's a very powerful statement. We are visibly united with Christ in time. In this way, we see ourselves in God. Because we are in Christos, because we are in Christ, we know ourselves, we see ourselves to be in God. And we live in his increase as our old self decreases. The sign of baptism reveals our invisible fellowship with Christ, our koinonia fellowship with Christ, where we perceive mercy, where we perceive grace, where we perceive the futurum resurrection ahead. Let's go to block three and the note from Bart there. Futurum resurrection has, in reality, come within our horizon. Announced in the crucifixion of the old self, the power of sin has been overcome through the grace of divine possibility, through the power of the grace of divine possibility. The visible is related to the invisible. The finite self is related to the invisible infinite. The finite world is related to the infinite kingdom of God. Dying with Christ results in a vast negation of the negative. Dying with Christ results in a vast negation of the negative. In other words, the divine no becomes a divine yes. Faith becomes the decisive factor. The faith of Christ, our Savior, becomes the decisive factor in our new life. The faith of Christ... Pistuo. Faith of Christ becomes the decisive factor of our life. And because of his faith, we possess an inherent confidence in the future kingdom of glory. We have been profoundly blessed by the faith of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. That's going to wrap up a very powerful lesson. And by the way, Jürgen Moltmann picked up on all this commentary by Karl Barth in 6, 1 through 9. When Moltmann became the successor to Karl Barth, he took neo-orthodoxy and put it within a context of a theology of promise and hope, promise and hope. And I dedicated all of my adult education to the theology of Jürgen Moltmann and the way that he interpreted neo-orthodoxy. That's going to wrap up 6, 1 through 9. Our next lesson will be 6, 10 through 18. 6, 10 through 18 will be our next lesson.